if that was your testimony, but that at the end of the day, what thus saith the Lord <laughs> is what, you know, is ultimately yeah. is what matters in the end. Yeah. I, I, I still believe that, that the word of God, that the Bible truly is the word of God. And um, I believe that it's what, what matters most is what God says, mm. ultimately. You know, and I believe that God is, I believe God is right. <laughs> even, even when it hurts, right? Even when it hurts, even if, even when it, even when it means no to whatever it is that you're believing God for, I still believe that God is right. And that the word of the Lord um, is right. But you cannot intellectually say that those beliefs came from white folks because African people in Ethiopia and Egypt and Nubia were were the main defenders of those doctrines. And they were the ones arguing that the Bible was the word of God when white people were still praying to o Odin and Zeus and Thor and praying to rocks and trees. So you can. In fact, many of those same Europeans got their ideas of orthodoxy from Africans. So you cannot say that this came from white folks, but that is exactly how they yeah. Thing. And again, but that goes if back we to the would fact begin that to scholars, think with the word instead of just quote the word, think with it, it will literally begin to reset your mind, mm -hmm. reset your mind, reset your disposition. You address it. Um, again, in my culture, you know, not just African American, but Pentecostal, I'm that way, whereas the Baptists, the Methodists, uh, the United Methodist uh, Presbyterian, they they may have been a few years ahead of us in processing and thinking. And we are now somewhat bringing up, and not because we were less than, but we just had a different focus. focus. Uh, we had a different focus. And while that focus is great, uh, but there has to be a balance in that focus. Of, of, of spirituality and science and, and one medicine of the things that's and important about health, that is uh, um, I've always I said say. that I look at this as a Genesis 5020 plan when man intended for harm God intends for good so every time one of these laws come up it gets it might get in the way it might hinder it might cause some inconvenience but we know again that God intends for good and look at what happened for example in 2020 when we had one of the largest voter turnouts during a pandemic during a pandemic people showed up they turned out and they voted because they understood that there is an importance in their voice being heard being amplified and not being silent so what dr king said then in the 50s is absolutely true today right. and, and so we um, have to make uh, you know, sure we have 2020 that but i've lost generation uh, my faith has grown because when we saw that pandemic hit and the quarantine time i said we're done the church are we're done we're not going to be able to pay the bills we're not going to meet, meet deadlines can I tell you today, because I, I haven't been with you in a year since, that that was our best financial year. With the church being closed, right? <laughs> it was our best financial year. You know, you've had people get, hey, he, he doesn't offer, we felt it in our heart, here's a thousand dollars, here's a seed. No, we have people calling us, here's fifteen thousand dollars. Here's another fourteen, here's another fifteen. So when I got elected here, I carried that one. And when I looked at the bigger numbers and I opened up and sat on this desk and I said, oh no, this is not like about this. This is a $3 million property, right? Check this out. To, to, to whom much is given, much is required. Okay. But if you were faithful in the little, he can give you more. So when, now, when I saw that, it didn't phase me. I sat before my board and I was like, oh, this is nothing. And they're like, what? You, do you see those numbers? Like, you watch. If God did it for me in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. The other thing that happened was I was being followed by my GYN for fibroids. They were pretty bad. They weren't necessarily huge, but they were very painful. And we were at the point where it was surgery time. She says, we have done everything. You've waited as long as you can. It's time for us to do something. And I said, give me one more year give me one more year and let me see what I can do 
in a more naturopathic way. Just give me one more year. When I left her office, I went home. I got on YouTube. I got books. I researched how to feed my body to cure my body. And from that point on, I've only seen her maybe once for my checkup. We are not doing surgery. <laughs> God willing, that will never happen. Most popular thing. Here's the reality. Individuals, and I don't suggest anyone go behind bars to get time to themselves, so let's be clear. But individuals that are behind the four walls, that are incarcerated, uh, oftentimes it's the first time that they can focus on them uh, because life gets in the way when we're outside of the four walls mm -hmm. and, all, and you have individuals that are responding and reacting, but there's nothing you can do in addressing anything that's going on in the outside world. So your whole job mm -hmm. is to focus on you. Mm -hmm. And so I will tell someone that has a seven year bid, a five year bid, a 15 year bid, you have the opportunity to create the best life plan because you are going to go home. So how do I envision my life being different when I get home? And so you have time to add to it expand upon it uh, say yeah that's not really what it is that i want to do research it to define where i'm going to go once i leave like here facing, um, and with this that huge level mountain when you face like these these trials these challenges that you we face in a daily life um there's still strength that's found through that because you find out what are the areas i need to work on what are the areas of of you know like layla of of bev like you speaking to yourself and you're like, what are the areas that I need to really just like focus on? Um, and it kind of just like, it made me more aware of who I was as a person. And so I feel like that's even like through, through my writing and even through just anything that we do. Um, like it's something that we always ask ourselves. We always find ourselves stuck somehow. And it's just like, God is like, I still, like you still could find strength through that by just working on it, by, by putting in the time. And so what I can say is that that's what I said. I was just like, you know, we find new strengths in those weaknesses, in those things that God highlights and says like, this is what you got to work on. So that's something I can share. Wow. And you know, see, while you, you know, were speaking, um, something else came even to him. And well, I, I am so thankful for that question because out of everything that our ministry has done, we've always been a uh, ministry addressing crises. Um, that is what we do. Uh, as we both came out of many crises ourselves, we uh, seek to address as, as many as possible. And so I would say, um, as my husband has died literally and come back to life two times in our 37 years of marriage our 41 years of of knowing each other and about five years ago had what we now know was the preliminary to uh, uh the covid he they didn't even know what it was his lungs shut down they couldn't they didn't know how to treat him and and miraculously they said because he had been so healthy one of the things that we've always been about is immune uh, uh sufficiency immune building uh strengthening uh, our our muscles Every Everything. And so out of that, that thankfully but he survived um, and, and had to learn But as the pandemic again, began to roll out and we began to go into quarantine and shut down, I just saw where this was going. So I started reaching out to uh, the governor and to the State Department of Health and others saying, OK, uh, we'll make our space available for testing. I said, now you really need to consider bringing testing into communities where people have access to them. Uh, and we talked for months with the government, uh, with the state government and the Department of Health about establishing a testing site. So finally, state government agreed and we became the first uh, faith-based testing site in the state. Uh, and so much so that uh, the first lady of the state, Tammy Murphy, came the first day we opened. At one point, we were doing testing five days a week, uh, uh, trying to get people tested. And then months and months and months later, the government kind of caught on and said, oh, you know, maybe we should do something where churches are, where because people trust churches. And then when we transitioned from testing to the vaccine, uh, I said, we absolutely have to make our space available for that. What, one of the things I try to do as a pastor is to stay in touch and communicate with my congregation and with my leadership. 
Uh, if you talk to anybody from St. Matthew, you know, kind of you know it's kind of a joke that I. So I was like very 50. concerned for him. This um, virus is it was intended to bring fear, anxiety, worries. You know, he he went out all the time basically to to go to the hospitals. Mind you, I didn't do a lot of things with him because I did still have my job. So yeah. I was working through, you know, at home through the oh, school. Oh, yes, yes. So there were certain things I really couldn't well, That's right, you were teaching online. You were doing yes. your yes from I, home yeah. virtually. There yeah. were times like, that he would go and I'm like, wear your gloves, make sure you have your mask, you know, and be careful because I mean, I know everyone was concerned about their yes. um, family member when they were out there. So when he would come back, I said, you have to go down to the basement, change your clothes, you know, here's a new pair. I'm going to leave your clothes downstairs.